I smoked, so I have to pace myself. My tip is, if you're having people over for Thanksgiving, start cooking in October. You can quit. Call 1-800-QUIT-NOW for help getting free medication. Now. I'm Dylan Crawler. Coming up, he says he was guilty until proven innocent. Matthias Ometu speaking for the first time since criminal charges against him were rejected. The CDC handing out eviction protection for renters across the country. We'll tell you what that means for struggling families across San Antonio. As the presidential campaign enters its most intense stretch, Joe Biden and the Democrats pushing a promise of dialing down Americans' anxiety. I'm Karen Cape at the White House with a look at who they most hope to persuade. And after some patchy showers throughout the day today, I'll have an updated look at the radar, talk about rain chances in the future, and the prospects of the cold front coming right up. A worldwide pandemic and unrest across the country has made people stressed out, including children how parents can use this current climate as a learning opportunity. The News at Five starts right now. First at five, a disturbing discovery inside a far north side home this afternoon. San Antonio police are investigating an apparent murder-suicide of a married couple at a home on Windhurst near Blanco Road. Officers were called to the home around 1245 after a concerned relative called 911. That relative said that they went to the home after not hearing from one of the victims for 24 to 48 hours. They wanted police to go there as well. There they found a 55 year old woman dead. Investigators say a man also found dead inside the home. Neither one of the victims have been identified. Investigators say based on the evidence, though, found inside the home, including a gun, it appears to be a murder suicide. However, an investigation is underway. Multiple times during that day, I was advised that I'm making it harder for myself. I, I, all I was doing was just protecting my rights that the state of Texas provided me. He was repeatedly told to give his name to San Antonio police, and he repeatedly refused, eventually ending up handcuffed and then in the back of an SAPD cruiser. A day after prosecutors rejected felony assault charges in the case of mistaken identity, Matthias Ametu gave his version of what happened. As our Dylan Collier explains, Ametu and his attorneys are incensed that the department and the chief are both still claiming that the officers acted appropriately. Backed by his civil and criminal attorneys and a growing number of supporters, 33-year-old Matthias Ometu said the San Antonio police officers he encountered along Woodstone Drive last week took away his freedom. I felt like I was trapped, held against my will, and I, I, there was no ending to what I felt like I was uh, going through. Police believed Ometu matched the description of a family violence suspect from a nearby call. I'm not giving my name. Ometu, who has no criminal record and was out for a jog, time and again refused to give officers his name, his legal right under Texas law. Ometu later forced into the back of a patrol vehicle, two officers claiming he kicked them during the struggle. Attorney Artessa House says even if Ometu had given his name, his ordeal wouldn't have ended right then and there. You know, it wouldn't have been over in two minutes. Let me tell you what would have happened. He didn't have his ID. He would have provided his name. The police still would have detained him to make sure he was who he was. SAPD officials now confirm they were actually looking for this man, Darren Smith Jr., who as of this evening had still not been charged in connection to the family violence case. Chief William McManus wrote in a memo this week that after examining the case, he determined the officers acted appropriately. Today, Ometu's defense attorney called on McManus to retract his statement. That's a problem that not only endorses this type of behavior, it blesses this type of behavior, and change needs to start from the top. SAPD officials today said they had nothing further to add and stand by the information and video that was released yesterday. Don't you see this badge? When you see this badge, you need to do whatever it is that we tell you to do. But that's not law, right? Those are not the rules. House says she has not decided the next step yet. It could be a civil rights lawsuit or a formal complaint with SAPD Internal Affairs. Reporting outside the Bear County Courthouse, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. 
He's the well-known owner of a downtown bar. He's the owner of a well-known downtown bar, I should say. And tonight he's facing felony charges. 54-year-old Jonathan Paul Villanueva, owner of the basement bar and lounge on La Soya Street, accused of forcing his way into a home yesterday and assaulting a woman inside. Arrest records say he punched the woman several times, choked her till she passed out. Villanueva now charged with burglary of a habitation with the intent to commit assault, violation of a protective order and family violence. San Antonio police investigating a shooting inside a northeast side home that sent a 13 year old boy to the hospital and that is where he died. This morning, police believe that the shooting was accidental, but two teenage girls were taken in for questioning. So here's what we know right now. The victim, Deadrian Walker, and one of the girls was handling a gun at the home on Village Crest near Ritterman around 5 a.m. The gun went off and a bullet struck Walker in the chest. The homeowner was also questioned. She told officers that she was sleeping at the time of the shooting and was unaware Walker was even inside her house. Police say the gun did not belong to anyone who lives at that home. And many San Antonio renters will likely be protected from evictions for the rest of the year starting Friday. A new order by the CDC keeps renters from being evicted for non-payment of rent. But the renters have to submit a signed declaration with several statements, including that they've done their best to get government help to pay their rent. They've had a substantial loss of income or extraordinary out-of-pocket medical expenses and that they're paying what they can. One of the justices of the peace who handles eviction cases in Bear County says he is still waiting for guidance on how the logistics of these protections will actually work. My particular court does have eviction uh, settings next week that uh, more than likely those are going to be uh, uh, postponed until we get a better handle on exactly whose responsibilities are what under this order. And today, those protections were not in effect, and the eviction cases continued. In a year consumed by coronavirus crises and racial unrest, voters are stressed about the presidential election. While their techniques might be different, Democrats and Republicans are trying to convince voters in their own way that their candidate will have a calming effect on the country. Karen Kaif is at the White House to explain the presidential campaign push to make America relaxed again. Well, Ursula, the campaign's coming at this in very different ways. President Trump trying to project strength so voters see him as a calming force during turbulent times. And Joe Biden, he says if he wins this role, he doesn't want Americans to think about him that much at all. The upcoming election is causing some to be on edge. Fires are burning and we have a president who fans the flames. Biden and the radical left's weak response has led to chaos and violence. Donald After Trump. President Trump took office, some saw their anxiety levels rise, leading therapists to coin a new phrase. Trump anxiety disorder, the main symptom fearing that the world is ending. While documented by psychologists and news broadcasts, the disorder isn't an official diagnosis. Still, a study by the American Psychological Association last year found the election to be a source of stress for 56 percent of Americans. That's up from 52 percent in 2016. Look, Biden promises if elected, Americans won't be as stressed. I'd be looking to lower the temperature in this country, not raise it. While Democrats portray Biden as a calming candidate, Republicans cast President Trump as the strong candidate. No one has more strength than Donald Trump. No one can keep up with him. I mean, yes, he's got the best message. Yes, he's got the best record, but he's got the best work ethic. The Trump campaign launched ads this week portraying the president as a deliberate leader in a chaotic world. Strong leadership when America needs it most. This year, part of the Republican agenda is a pledge to return to normal in 2021. It's a nod to the pandemic that has upended life, amplified stress, and potentially might affect the presidential election. And both of these campaigns are working hard to target this message in particular at moderate suburban voters who they believe they need to fight hard for to make the difference in a lot of battleground states like Texas. Ursula? First time de-stressing was ever a political platform for a presidential race. Thank you, Karen Caper, reporting live from the White House. And now the latest on concerns over nationwide mail delays. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy has been subpoenaed by the House Committee on Oversight and Reform. He now has till September 16th 
to hand over documents related to the investigation. The U.S. Postal Service says they fully intend to comply with their obligations under the law. The boyfriend of Breonna Taylor, the 26-year-old EMT who was shot and killed in Louisville in March by police, now suing the city and the police department. Kenneth Walker seeking more than $10 million in damages as well as immunity from any other charges related to the case. On March 13th, Taylor fatally shot by a police officer who was executing a no-knock warrant at her apartment in search of her ex-boyfriend. When officers entered the apartment, Walker fired one shot, he says in self-defense, striking one officer. An attempted murder charge against Walker was later dropped. The real suspect now claims he turned down a plea deal offered by Louisville prosecutors to implicate Taylor in his ongoing drug case. Meantime, calls for the officer involved in Taylor's shooting to be arrested are part of a larger call to action over brutality and racial injustices across the country. Good amount of cloud cover over the Alamo City, mostly gray there as we look off to the west from our crossroads camera. And it looks like it could rain at any time. Unfortunately, not a whole lot of showers and rain falling from those clouds that we have overhead. There are some areas of rain, some little pockets of showers, and even one little shower that's popped up near 410 and I-10. But a whole lot of cloud cover, not much to show for it in terms of rainfall. Our cap is holding a little too steady this afternoon. Temperature wise, Big differences. It all depends on sunshine. 102 in Del Rio. Meanwhile, 90 in shirts, 88 in Panna Maria and Floresville. Our high temperature so far today in San Antonio, 95 degrees. So a day under 100. As for this evening, a few stray showers, about a 30% chance. And then as we go through the night, mostly cloudy temperatures falling down through the 80s. And we still have more rain chances to talk about and an update on the prospects of a cold front for next week coming right up. Sure does feel different out there. Thank you, Adam. Many times parents want to shield their children from difficult things, but the pandemic has made its way into everyone's life in one way or another. And it turns out hard times can actually do some good in teaching kids valuable lessons. The next generation is growing up in a world we never imagined. Six months ago, this wasn't in our wildest dreams, and now it's a part of our everyday culture. Hard times can also be a good time to teach children lessons they'll carry through life. Resiliency is the ability to go through, adapt, and maybe even come out better, on the other hand, when you've got challenges. Psychotherapist Cheryl Ziegler says resiliency isn't born with us. It's learned by teaching children to have a positive mindset, letting them help others even in tough times, staying connected to family and friends, being flexible. One plan may turn into another. And accepting fear. These are uncertain times. So accepting that you might feel fearful or anxious is actually helpful because then it gives you an opportunity also to express that. Ziegler says managing stress is also important for children to learn. Teach that by making sure they take care of basic needs, exercise, eat well, stay hydrated, laugh and be playful. It's an antidote to stress. Don't go back to overscheduling, which can lead to stress. And remember to take deep breaths. These skills can set children up for success. They have just adapted probably better than adults, so it is really encouraging. And remember that children lead through example, so it's important for parents to model these skills to help their kids. It's been in the works for seven years now. Drone deliveries could be near. The crucial step Amazon has taken to bringing your future orders to your doorstep. Could happen in just 30 minutes. We'll tell you about it next. It's been in the works for years, but online retail giant Amazon now one step closer to launching drone delivery in the U.S. It's a program Amazon first announced in 2013. The company vowing to use drones to make deliveries in 30 minutes or less. Over the weekend, the Federal Aviation Administration approved an air carrier certificate, which must be held before a company begins drone deliveries. Amazon says it will use the approval to begin to test deliveries, but declined to say when or where the test will actually take place. Social distancing concerns during the pandemic have increased interest in using robots for delivery. 
but the technologies aren't ready yet for widespread use. The FAA is still developing regulations needed for drone use, such as remote identification. David Carbon, who took the lead on Amazon's drone program in March, called the certification an important step and says, quote, we will continue to develop and refine our technology to fully integrate delivery drones into the airspace and work closely with the FAA and other regulators around the world to realize our vision of 30-minute delivery, end quote. Amazon is the third drone delivery company to receive certification from the FAA. UPS and Wing, a subsidiary of Google's parent company Alphabet, both received their certifications in 2019. Did it feel like summer was over for you, Adam? Not necessarily felt like summer was over, <laughs> but it felt a little cooler out there today and not quite as thick in terms of the humidity. The cloud cover helped us out a little bit in terms of keeping temperatures down, but it's also the lack of sunshine that that really limited our thunderstorm development because of it didn't erode that cap that's in the atmosphere. All right, let's look at the radar and take a look what's happening out there. This is over the past six hours. A few spotty showers popping up. We had some last night here and there and a little bit here and there even right now, but it's hard for them to sustain themselves and even develop over San Antonio because of that cap we have above us that was very difficult to erode today. Nonetheless, there are a few little sprinkles out there right now, and that's all we have to speak of at the moment, especially Basically 410 uh, Castle Hills area, a little downpour and on the far south side, 1604 and 281. So everything so far has been outflow driven and we didn't get many outflows to move in. And the ones that we did couldn't generate those showers this afternoon because of that thicker cap that's on the atmosphere. Some locations got some decent rainfall. Look at that. Carnes County over to Gonzales and DeWitt counties, even right along the Kendall and Kamal County lines there. A little downpour dropped 15 hundredths of an inch of rain. The real heavy rainfall, that was far to the north of us. I mean, we're talking Temple to Waco over toward Tyler. That's where they had over five inches of rain estimated by the Doppler radar. And we still have some areas of rain off to the north of us. At least some parts of Texas are getting some needed rainfall. We still have an active weather pattern where the upper level disturbance is really helping to kickstart these showers and storms. This dip in the upper level flow that's going to remain in place for a couple more days. So we still have favorable odds of more showers and storms developing. The big question is exactly where and when this is a future cast. I'm purposefully not zooming in really tight to San Antonio because I don't want you to get fixated on exactly where these little potential showers are popping up because that doesn't matter. It's not necessarily going to be accurate. What I want to point out here with this is that it just illustrates the fact that more showers are likely to develop and they'll be widely separated or scattered in nature through the next couple of days. But the exact location, these models don't know. They're just taking basically a wild guess at where they could be popping up. A lot of it's outflow driven, and then we also have that upper level uh, energy to support us a little bit as well. Temperature wise, rain cooled air up north, Dallas 78, 79 in Abilene. Meanwhile, Del Rio 101, 89 here in San Antonio and Pleasanton and Hondo 91. We have the clouds that have tempered or kept the temperatures down a little bit. Sunny in Valverde County, so 101, but cloudy in Kerrville at 83, Fredericksburg right now at an even 80. And Catula, 91. Almost feels like summer's over for them, I guess you could say, but don't worry, the heat's going to be back again. Dew points are in the low to mid 70s, so we're feeling the mugginess out there. Heat indices not out of control today, mostly in the upper 90s to slightly above 100 along the coastal plain. So tomorrow, 30 to 40 percent chance. I think we'll have some more scattered activity here and there in the afternoon. Widely separated hit or miss activity that develops mid 90s for a high temperature. And then as we go through Friday and Saturday, very similar conditions. And I know there's been the prospects of a cold front as we get into next week, uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday. Right now, we're just monitoring for the potential, but really, I don't think odds favor it at this time. All right, thank you.
It's the day that uh, a lot of rookies and maybe veterans that are on the edge dread. Great. Yeah, and usually more like rookie free agents. In this yeah. case, draft picks you want to try and hang on to as long as you can. What we can talk about is cut down day is coming up Saturday. The Cowboys have already started their cuts. And remember, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, they're going to expand their practice squad. And the Earl Campbell watch list just got one better with a UTSA roadrunner coming up. Dallas Cowboys cancel practice today to begin their cut downs in order to reach the required limit of 53 player roster by Saturday. Second round draft pick Trayvon Diggs doesn't have to worry about that. Rookie cornerback out of Alabama is continuing to impress us during training camp and in fact has had more opportunities with Jordan Lewis nursing an ankle injury and Shadobe Awuze with a knee has meant more reps for Diggs. He revealed he talks to his brother Bills wide receiver Stefan Diggs every day for advice not for what he has done well but on the mistakes he's made. You know, I typically don't show my brother the plays that I make. I always show him the plays that, you know, I didn't make and the plays that, you know, I can get better at and things I could do to get better. And, you know, just give me tips on what he see from a receiver standpoint and what I'm doing wrong as a DB. So, you know, I, I try not to get too many pats on the back for my brother and anybody at, at that point. So, you know, uh, I want to make the plays that come my way, but, you know, I always want to be able to not get make the same mistake twice or or get beat by the same thing twice so you know i want to be sharp on that as well but you know it's plays um uh we don't really share the good plays i, I like to share the bad plays and dick says one big advantage he has in covering routes is that he used to be a wide receiver the houston Texans will hold their final scrimmage tonight before beginning the cut down of the required 53 players by 3 p.m on saturday randall cobb is about to start his first season in a texans uniform after playing for such greats as aaron Rodgers and the packers and most recently dak prescott and the cowboys now he's a target for deshaun watson in houston after signing a three-year 27 million dollar contract this offseason but the texans season opener also put cobb against tyran matthew who is part of the defense only allowed 11 and a half points in a six-game win streak for kc before the super bowl title and played in houston just two years ago I think this will be the first time we actually get the match up so I look forward to that uh, he's a, a great competitor uh, what he brings to the game is, is special and he, he loves fun and, and, and he loves doing what he does so I look forward to the matchup and right, Texas and the Chiefs kick off the NFL season one week from tomorrow in Kansas City and congratulations to UTSA so singer McCormick. The sophomore running back has been named to the Earl Campbell Tyler Rose Award watch list. McCormick, who comes to the Roadrunners from Judson High School, is one of 47 players on the preseason watch list, which recognizes the top offensive player in Division I football. The Conference the USA Freshman of the Year broke two records, including all-purpose yardage and single-game rushing with 189 UTSA. yards against Utah. He's McCormick. among some pretty big names, including Sam Ellinger, the starting quarterback of Texas, and, of course, San Antonio's own Kellen Mond, the starting quarterback for Texas A&M. Yeah, big names there. Big time. Thanks, Greg. You got it. We'll be right back. Just a little bit of activity on the radar screen. Far south side, uh, basically closer to the Elmendorf area and along I-37 there at 1604. South of Bandera downpour and 281 and 410. A little light shower. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5 with us. Today. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.